The last step of the x-ray process is developing the film. When x-ray film is energized by being exposed to radiation, an image is burned into it. And this is called a latent image. Unless the film is specially treated through developing, the image can never be converted to a real one. Whether in an automatic processor, the manual dip tank, or the quick chairside developer, the chemicals and the procedures in developing x-ray films are basically the same. When using the automatic processor, you must follow the manufacturer's instructions in use and maintenance to avoid failure. Chemical temperatures, the timing, and sometimes even chemical replenishments may be totally automatic. The most important thing you need to pay close attention to is loading the films slowly so they have time to spread out and not overlap and stick to each other. Manual processing is still used, even if maybe not in your office. The dip tank can serve as a backup to the automatic processor. Its chemicals must be fresh, like an automatic processor's, and never older than 60 days by law. They must be used at the correct temperature. Too warm, and they turn films dark very quickly. Too cool, they won't develop at all. Manually, the process involves dipping the film in the developer for 4 to 5 minutes at 68 to 70 degrees, depending on the chemicals. Naturally, this can be accomplished only if you have a timer and a thermometer, both required by law when manually processing film. Sight developing or immersing it just until you see an image appear is prohibited. You must time it. Always agitate the film gently to release any bubbles that may be attached to the film. Please note that all film developing must be done under a safe light. After the image appears in the set time, rinse the films in the water bath for 30 seconds and then immerse them in the fixer. Once the films are in the fixer, the overhead white light can be safely turned on or the door can be opened. Any exposure to visible light can ruin an undeveloped x-ray film, and that's why it's very important that the dark room be light tight. A dropped film can be fogged by any light leaking under the door of the dark room. If the film is ruined, a retake is needed and the patient is exposed to unnecessary radiation for your sake. Depending on the chemicals, films are completely fixed in 10 to 20 minutes, and then they're washed in water for at least 10 minutes to remove all residual fixer, which could turn the film brown over time if not removed. The chairside developer is a great tool that allows quick availability of a readable film. Used extensively in endodontics or root canal therapies, it's also helpful when treating emergency patients by minimizing the time needed in diagnosis. Depending on the chemicals temperatures, follow the developing and the fixing times marked on the bottles. When finished, run these quick develop films through the automatic processor or the manual fixing process. This will permanently protect them from turning brown as well. As mentioned, Every step of the x-ray process is equally important. Any breach may mean repeating an x-ray. Additional patient exposure is really not acceptable. By understanding certain errors and correcting their causes, you can minimize the patient's radiation exposure. Remember that both x-rays and visible light in essence burn the film or make it dark. So if a film is dark it got excessive energy and if a film is light it didn't get enough energy and a clear film clearly got no radiation at all. Film darkness can also be due to processing errors. 
If overprocessed due to high temperature or excessive time, the films will also be too dark. Spots on films can result from contamination by water or by a fixer. Remember, the moment the x-ray fixer touches the film, the developing process there stops. Make sure film is placed in or near the fixer only when you are absolutely certain that the processing is ready to be irreversibly arrested. If an automatic processor has dirty rollers, dark bands may be seen on the film. Overlapping can also happen as a result, even if the films are properly loaded. Only proper machine maintenance and clean rollers can prevent these problems from happening. White lines on or across the film may be due to fingernail scratches. Dark lines are usually the result of creasing the film when bending it into place. Certain film placement errors may be seen in the process films as well. Extraordinarily long roots, called elongation, often leave the edges of the film, as seen on this premolar. Here, the x-ray beam glanced off the film at an other than 90 degree angle because the film was not at a right angle to the beam. The metal part of the film holder also comes into view, which is seen in white here. If the roots seem to leave the film, yet are not seemingly stretched out or elongated, the film was not placed centrally over the teeth to be examined. Extremely short roots indicate that the teeth were not parallel to the film. This is called foreshortening. Remember how we measured the shadow on the board early in this video? Curved white or clear areas show that a part of the film was not exposed to x-ray. The curve is the edge of the x-ray tube head, once called the cone. That's why this mistake is still commonly called a cone cut. It's practically impossible to get a cone cut while using film holders and aiming devices. Herringbone, or honeycomb patterns on developed film, reveal that it was placed in the mouth backwards. The film will also be too light. The pattern comes from the beam passing through the thin lead foil backing of the film. It's difficult to demonstrate this on video, but you may be able to see them at the top of the arrow near the top right of this film. Finally, multiple and overlapped teeth mean that the film is exposed to the x-ray beam twice in two different areas of the mouth. Careful exposure habits, placing used film in a separate cup from the clean films, prevents a film from being double exposed. In order for dental x-ray films to be properly used, they must be properly mounted. Individual films can be placed in a solid mount or a clear sleeve and labeled with the date and the patient's name. Bite-wing x-rays are properly grouped as if looking at the patient and labeled. Full mouth x-ray films consisting of 18 to 20 films must be exactly mounted to be diagnostically acceptable. This is accomplished by following five simple steps. First, place all of the films on a viewer box with the dots raised or facing upward toward you. Next, group the films separated into posteriors, anteriors, and bite wings. Then, slide the upper films to the top of the viewer platform and lower films to the bottom. Remember these tips. Upper molars usually have three discernible roots. Lower molars have two. Plus, Upper posterior films may reveal the sinuses. Lower posterior films may show the mental foramen below the bicuspids, seen as a dark spot here. And finally, upper anterior teeth are bigger than the lower anteriors. 
Now move the anterior films to the center of the viewer and shift them into the position they'd be as if you were looking at the patient's smile. And finally, slide the patient's right posterior and bite wing films to your left and their left films to your right, again, as if you were looking at them. You can identify the right or the left films by the roots, which tend to curve distally. but especially by tooth sequence. When looking at the patient from left to right, you see their right molars, then their premolars, then the canine, then the incisors, and then as you move to the right, the canine, the premolars, and finally the molars again. Do this for the upper and then for the lower films, and when finished, they should all be arranged in an orientation that matches the mounting sheets your practice uses. And then place them in their proper position in this mounting. With practice, th this entire process actually becomes very easy, obvious, and automatic. By understanding the flow of dental radiography and the purpose and the importance of each and every step and through a lot of practice, you will develop the skills to confidently provide dental x-ray exams for your patients. Don't assume that you can always simply just take another x-ray. Remind yourself who suffers from that attitude. The patient does. A rule known as the ALARA, the ALARA rule, stands for as low as reasonably achievable. This rule must always be borne in mind when x-raying patients, thereby minimizing their exposure to radiation. Radiation levels may never reach absolute zero, but as long as the benefits outweigh the risks, x-ray exposure levels in dentistry are extremely low and acceptable. It's totally in your hands. We can't emphasize the importance of your role too many times.